Hey, welcome to Drawing with Abby. Today, we're going to continue our beginner's guide to Infinite Painter and focus on arguably the most important part of any drawing app, the brushes. We'll explore the brush engine, the interface, and my top brush picks. Plus, I'll guide you through editing and creating your own kick-ass brushes. So, let's get started. First up, let's understand Infinite Painter's unique brush engine. It's quite different from Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop, so expect a different feel. The key difference I've noticed is that the app has a weird activation point. Activation point is the pressure needed to make a mark. I find that Infinite Painter requires a bit more pressure to get some of those brushes going. This is something we'll address in the brush setting segment. The unique brush engine also means that you can't import your library of photoshop.abr brushes into the app. But have no fear, I'll walk you through how you can recreate your favorite brushes in the app. For now, let's move on. Your brush toolbar is the gateway to all brush related actions. Tap on brush, eraser, and blend icons in the toolbar to launch the brush panel. It's split into two sections, categories on the left and brush previews on the right. The selected brush is highlighted and the icons for new brush creation and settings are easily accessible. Remember, your brush blend and eraser tools share the same library. This is super handy for techniques like negative inking or texture blending. Check out my previous tutorial for more toolbar secrets. As a comic book illustrator, I lean towards certain brushes for sketching, <laughs> inking, and painting. For sketching, I use the combo of the HB brush and the pencil category to lay down some rough, general shapes with lots of energy. However, for more detailed sketching, I go to the soft pen in the pen category. This brush is reminiscent of Photoshop's soft round brush. For inking, my go-to is the manga inker in the pen category, ideal for crisp comic book style lines. It's great for hatching too. If you're looking for a textured line, try the dry ink brush from the paint category. For coloring, you can start with the bucket tool for flats and then use either the Mega Inker or the Marker Brush to complete your flats. For rendering, I use Mega Inker for cell shading and the Oil and Fine Blender for a more painterly style. If you've tried these brushes and they don't work for you, don't sweat it. We're about to cover how to customize these brushes to make them work for you. Now, let's dive deep into customizing your own brushes. To edit a brush, simply select it and tap the edit icon. You'll find yourself into a world of customization options. Your options are organized into five taps, stroke, head, texture, paint, and special. There's a lot of options in each tab, so I'm gonna stick to talking about which ones I think have the biggest impact. You should try playing around with each option yourself to see how they affect the way that you like your brush to behave. Starting off with the stroke attributes. Here we have the size and opacity attributes. These are fundamental yet vital attributes that affect your brush's impact on the canvas. Next is smoothing. This is crucial for sleek, clean lines, especially in styles like manga or detailed illustrations. Higher smoothing means that the app is going to assist more in stabilizing your strokes. And then we have shape dynamics. Here, you can adjust how the brush shape changes with pressure, tilt, or speed, adding a dynamic feel to your strokes. This is where we can compensate for Infinite Painter's weird activation point by changing the curve so it requires a lot less pressure to make a stroke. Moving on to the next category, we have our head attributes. With flow and spacing, these control the fluidity and distribution of your brush strokes, giving you the power to fine tune how the brush lays down the paint. Then we have depth. This adds a little bit more structure to your brush, making it more lifelike and tactile. 
The scatter attributes varies the patterns of your brush strokes for a more organic feel, ideal for textures like grass or hair. Then in the texture category, we have our pattern and scale. This is where you can apply an image to your brush, giving it a texture. The scale also allows you to get the exact feel you want, whether it's smooth, grainy, or something in between. Next, we have the paint dynamics category. The blur attribute in the paint category primarily affects the softness and diffuseness of the brush strokes edges. The pull refers to how the brush interacts with and drags the existing colors already on the canvas. And flow determines the rate at which the paint is applied to the canvas. It's kind of like the amount of paint loaded onto a traditional brush. Finally, we have the specials category. To be honest, I don't really play with this category too much, but there are some useful tools here. For one, is the watercolor. This setting adds a more concentrated pigment around the edges of your stroke, which is perfect for a painterly look. Next is screen tone. This setting transforms your brush into a screen tone effect, allowing you to create comic book and manga inspired images. When it comes to creating a new brush, the possibilities are endless. Tap the plus icon and start by uploading your shape and texture. Then dive into the same detailed settings as in the brush editor. The same categories of attributes exist here as it does with the brush editor. Here are some things to keep in mind when creating your own brush. First, start with a vision. Think about what you want this brush to achieve. Is it for detailed line work, broad washes of color, or something entirely unique? Knowing this is going to help you figure out which attributes are going to help you best and what sort of image you want to upload as your brush head. Next is to reference real brushes. If you're aiming for a natural look, it's a good idea to keep a set of real brushes handy for reference. Just make a couple of quick strokes on a piece of paper, take a photo of it, and upload that as your head image. You should also keep in mind the shape and texture of what you're trying to aim for. These define the initial character of your brush. Then think about fine tuning. Use the various tabs to tweak your brushes. Remember, small changes can make a big difference. Adjust settings like spacing, scanner, and blending modes to see how they transform the brush's behavior. And then just test and adjust. Make sure to create a test canvas and see how your brush performs. Don't hesitate to go back and keep making adjustments. The perfect brush might need several iterations. See how your brush behaves when strokes overlap. This is crucial for understanding its blending capabilities. And my final tip is to make sure to save different versions. As you tweak your brush, set different versions. This way you can compare and perhaps find uses for each variation. And that's a wrap on Brushes and Infinite Painter. I hope this guide helps you on your digital art journey. If you have any questions or want more details on brush settings, drop a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And as always, until next time, keep drawing. <music>